Welcome to June the 1st, 214 days left in the year. It is a great day to be here. You are at the Daily Devotional where we look into the Word of God. We have some fun facts, history, a couple of jokes at the end. Let's get into it. But first of all, a very happy birthday to Pastor Godfrey Whippen in Papua New Guinea, who is celebrating his birthday today. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 24, 14. So shall thy knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. If you're wanting to read the Bible in a year, today you want to read 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and 16, and John chapter 12, verses 27 to 50. Here's some thoughts for the day. The difference between the impossible and the possible lies in a person's determination. Determination gives you the resolve to keep going in spite of the roadblocks that lay before you. If your life is ever going to get better, you have to take risks. There is simply no way you can grow without taking chances. I, I, I tell you, you know, it is Pastor Godfrey's birthday today, and I just think of the history and the determination and the roadblocks that were put in his way, and how the Lord just guided him, and he took the risks. He could have stayed in Australia, but he had to go back and take the risk of preaching the gospel, and now we have a wonderful, wonderful revival going on in Papua New Guinea, and uh, praise the Lord for that. Here's some motivation for today. In life as in football, you won't go far unless you know where the goalposts are. On Today in History in 1792, Kentucky becomes the 15th state of the United States of America. World War I, 1915, the first German Zeppelin airship starts bombing London. In 1939, 99 sailors are lost with the sinking of the British submarine HMS Thetis. 2009, Air France Flight 447 crashes into the Atlantic. And in 2016, the longest tunnel in the world is built in Switzerland, a amazing 57 kilometers. Here's your personal story for today. 1 Corinthians 7, 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. References today come from Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And the British mathematician Charles Babbage wrote to Alfred Tennyson, complaining that two lines of his poem, The Vision of Sin, were inaccurate. The lines went, every moment a man dies, every moment one is born. Babbage argued that if this were true, the world population would never change. Instead, he wrote, the lines ought to read, every moment a man dies, every moment one and one sixteenth is born. <laughs> Mathematicians say, hey? Babbage missed the point, though. He tried to analyze the poetic words of Tennyson in a way that missed their true meaning. Poets throughout the ages have used figurative language to make a point. Now, the lovers in the Song of Solomon use poetic comparisons to express their love for one another. The bride compares herself to two flowers. The Rose of Sharon uh, was not a rose like we usually know it, but it's a wild flower, much like a crocus. The crocus was a common sight in the plains of Sharon, a region known for fertility. Take a look in Isaiah 35, 12. In the same way, the lily of the valley was not a white lily. The Hebrew word referred to a variety of flowers, including blue lotus, the water lily, and almost any brightly colored flower. By employing such metaphors, the bride indicates that she sees nothing unique about her own beauty. Like the wildflowers of the field, she is just one of many. The groom, however, sees her differently. Compared to her, all the other flowers are thorns. She is like a beautiful flower growing in the midst of a bunch of weeds. The bride responds by describing the groom with a comparison of her own. She imagines herself coming upon an apple tree blooming in the midst of the woods. The fruit of the wild apple tree is usually somewhat bitter, but her lover's fruit is sweet to taste. He has taken her to the banquet hall. Now, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, Solomon built a glorious feasting hall decorated with gold and expensive furniture. Some Arabic poetry describes a custom where people would place a sign outside the home inviting the guests to a party. 
In this case, however, the banner outside the banqueting hall announces not a party, but love. And outside of our banqueting hall, it should say, welcome, come in and experience the Holy Spirit, the miracle transforming power that is given by God uh, on the day of Pentecost that you can receive. And you can know the love, the hope, the faith, all of these things ready and waiting for that wonderful wedding feast when the Lord returns for his church. Amen to that. Here's your devotional thoughts for today. Now, Pastor Brad says, you know, as he's getting towards the end of life's journey, he's uh, getting a bit older. He's feeling more like a transient. I think any of us can probably feel like that at times, like we are just sojourners passing through this life. And it's natural. And Abraham first described himself as a stranger and a sojourner uh, when he was buying a burial plot for Sarah in Genesis 23. Now, time and death make you think about such things. Most elderly believers say the same thing. There's no home for us this side of heaven. And uh, like Pilgrim in uh, Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, once we've caught sight of the celestial city, there it is right there waiting for us. We've read about it. We know we want to be there. And uh, we know who the builders are. Uh, we're not going to be content with anything less. So Abraham, we took the city and the builder was God in Hebrews 11. Now in Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, uh, as Frodo and the other hobbits set out on their great adventure, they sing home is behind and the world is ahead. But for Christians, it's the other way around. The world is behind us, and our home is ahead, and we have that dogged determination we talked about to make sure that no obstacle in our way is going to stop us. Our mind is set firmly on that. So there's no valleys of weeping there, for God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. No more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain. The former things passed away. We read about that in Revelation 21.4. The last two chapters of the Bible say, our team wins, and it's good to be on the winning side in any sporting event. That promise makes the present journey easier to endure and very exciting. Now, Psalm 119, verse 105 says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, the breath of life was breathed into us by God. Genesis 2, 7 says that he formed man out of the dust of the earth, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Without that breath, we'd only be a chunk of earth, lifeless, without the ability to do anything. Just as he breathed that first breath into us, he expects us to continue that breath of life by studying the word and setting it deep within us. As we study and read, we need to speak the word exhale so that our ears may hear the word. Each time we speak the word and we inhale, it becomes more and more real to us. After the time of speaking the word to our ears, it becomes breath of life within us. And we continue to exhale each time we need assurance that God's word really works. Just think about that. Inhale, exhale. It's just our second nature to let it come out what goes in. And you've heard the saying, garbage in, garbage out. And we never want to take in garbage. We've got to guard our mind, you know, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, etc. Uh, so we, we need to make sure that, that we try and filter out the garbage in what we watch and what we do and what we say and who we hang around with. Uh, so we don't want the garbage. And that's why we need the word. That's why you need to come here regularly, read the word of God, listen to these daily devotionals, get warmed up and then have a positive outlook on each and every day so that you're able to filter it out. So with the word, we can distinguish between what is right and wrong. What is garbage and what is treasure for our soul? What is nourishment for our body? And what brings life to everything around us? So start today, inhaling the word of God and exhaling that love, that light, that shining, and that hope that gives others a reason to join us on this journey that we call life, waiting for that wonderful city. Amen to that. Well, I just have a couple of fun facts to finish off. There wasn't a single pony in the Pony Express. Did you know that? It was just horses. Lightning strikes 6,000 times per minute on this planet. Here's your closing thought. Yeah, I thank God.
for the lawn that needs mowing, the windows that need washing, the gutters that need cleaning, means I have a home. And we know there are many people out there that might not have, uh, you know, all the luxuries of life, might not live in a home, but remember that you have a wonderful home waiting for you and you are more than, than uh, just brothers and sisters. We are all the family of God. So take that to heart today. A couple of jokes. If it's true that girls are inclined to marry men like their fathers, well, it's understandable why many mothers cry so much at weddings. Here's a riddle for today. What kind of man was Boaz before he got married? What kind of man was Boaz? You got to go back to the Bible. Well, he was ruthless. Because, of course, Boaz married Ruth. And so before he married Ruth, he was ruthless. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen.